Welcome everyone to the inaugural episode of the brand new podcast, Will Act for Change, where we explore the relationship between activism and theater and film arts. I'm your host, Kat Kemet. I'm a non-union actress currently based in Los Angeles, and our first guest today is Miles Berman. Miles was a feature on the picket lines, and I can think of no better way to kick off this podcast than to celebrate and mark the tentative deal between SAG-AFTRA and AMPTP ending the historic 118-day strike. Like myself, Miles hails from Florida, moving to the LA area in 2015. He studied film and theater at UCF and Art Sake Studios in Orlando, and has since worked consistently in independent film and theater, managing to keep busy even through COVID by directing and producing Zoom plays while the industry slowed to a stop. His love of acting most recently culminated in becoming a strike captain and volunteering throughout the strike, advocating on behalf of all SAG members and aspiring members, while he himself was non-union. He never tired in his support for fair and reasonable compensation and protecting the path to a sustainable career for actors by pushing against the use of AI to replace actors. Miles, welcome to the podcast and thank you for joining. Thank you for having me. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself outside of, you know, the spiel I just gave. <laughs> that was a great spiel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, gosh. Uh, I, yeah, I've been out in L.A. since 2015. Um, I went from uh, running a children's acting school that was 25 years old, run by famous people, to becoming the artistic director of uh, the Barbara Morrison Performing Arts Center. Uh, I've been general manager of other theaters. I've, yeah, I've independent the independent film, uh, you know, studio, television. I've done a lot of studio television. Uh, mostly as background work. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've been doing performance since I was eight you know this is my life awesome so you've sort of become a feature on the picket lines when did you first decide to join the pickets uh the second or third day right I think it started on a Friday if I remember correctly and then uh I was finishing up the Hollywood Fringe Festival as a, a stage manager and um running 16 shows at the same time as a lighting designer, sound designer, button pusher, house manager. And so I finished that up and that was uh, right at the beginning, you know, uh, that was uh, June. And I wanted to get out there for the writer's solo strike and I did once, uh, but I was just so busy running 16 shows at once that I just wasn't able to. And then once that was done, I made it out to the picket line like in almost instantly. And, uh, you know, everything blurs together, uh, especially after 118 days of walking in circles. Um, but it was somewhere between the first and third day of the picket, you know, of the, the strike. What were some of the most moving or inspiring moments during during the strike for you? I mean... Look, it's changed my life, the strike. I've created an entire new family because of this. Um, you know, even even last night, I was talking to one of my head strike captains, you know, uh, lot captains. And it's, you know, L.A. is a very lonely town. Mm. It just is. Everyone's in competition with each other and we're all trying to get the same jobs and it's all about our dreams. And so when you walk into an audition room or something like that and you don't see other artists, you see competition. And so because of that, this, this town becomes very lonely and this strike gave, a, gave us a community. You know, I have 40 people minimum that, you know, we're, we're, we're tight. We're fingers crossed tight, however you want to put it. You know, it's, it's, it's really inspiring. 
Yeah, one of the first people I ran into uh, on the, the first day was Will Wheaton from Star Trek. You know, oh my God, I can say that now. I ran into Will Wheaton from Star Trek, right? I know him from and, the Guild. Oh, that's hilarious. I, I don't. I, 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 if anything, the other show I would know him from is The Big Bang Theory. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, that was the first person I ran into. And then the very next person I ran into moments later was Jack Black. And, you know, these are two people that I grew up with. And that was day one, two, whatever you want to call it. You know, inspiring, like the, the whole event was inspiring. Yeah. Um, according to the LA Times, you were initially hesitant to join SAG, but even though you were SAG eligible and you eventually changed your mind on that, what made you change your mind? So I've been eligible for like five ish years. I became eligible before I even moved to California. Well, I guess that's not true. I be I did the job that made me eligible in Florida, but the paperwork didn't go through until after I moved to California. So, yes, I was hesitant. Not because I didn't want to or that I didn't have the money or anything like that. It was because I was doing very well as a non-union actor, you know? And um, I don't have an agent, still don't. Uh, so that was uh, a fear that if I go SAG, like, why, how would I get an agent? Like, I don't have any SAG credits like that. And, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then, you know, you go on the line and you're there. 50, 60, 70, 80 days, you know, and... You're running into people like Michael Hitchcock from all the Christopher Guest movies, and you're running into Brandy Brandy Stillwell, who wrote and was a producer on Mad TV, and you know all these people, and they're like, "Oh, you're not union? That's and you're here? Yeah, that's incredible. And when do you think you're gonna join SAG? And you should. Everyone here's in SAG, and like, and then one day, months in. You know, it's this was two weeks before it ended and we didn't know it was going to end. So uh, I was driving home after talking to Michael Hitchcock one day, who, was, who uh, again was like for the third time, fourth time and over the course of, you know, four months. When are you going to join SAG? And I'm driving home thinking about the conversation. And I thought to myself, you know, it's either going to be two years two months, two weeks, or today. I'm gonna go SAG. It just depends on when at this point. And so I finally just decided to say, screw it. And I spent the $300 and I did $300, $3,000. And I did it. Awesome. And then I became captain, a SAG captain, like the next day. That's awesome. Yeah. My favorite part about that story, too, uh, you spoke of the uh, the L.A. Times article. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was able to announce to the world that I became SAG through an L.A. Times article, which by itself <laughs> is crazy. But what I find funny about that story is that I'm at the captain's party, the celebration party. And this this woman's walking around. She's asking people questions. I find out she's from the L.A. Times. And I could tell she kept looking at me, but she didn't want to ask me a question because, you know, I'm, I'm not like a celebrity celebrity or anything like that. And, <clears throat> and uh, I lean over to her. I'm like, I joined SAG during the strike and then just kind of like walked away. <laughs> and then she tapped me on the shoulder and she's like, did I just hear you correctly that you joined SAG during the strike? I was like, yes, ma'am. Do you want to talk to me? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> so funny the smart way to make an inroad <laughs> like listen <laughs> now this podcast uh what i'm aiming to do with it is to discuss the relationship between activism and advocacy and theater yeah. and film arts do you see yourself 
after this experience incorporating advocacy and activism more in your life? I don't think more is the right question. I've always been an advocate. I've always fought for what I felt was right. During the George Floyd protests, I was out on all of those. You know, I, I was shot at by the cops, you know, back in 2020. Um, I uh, I was in the, the 50,000 person march down Hollywood. Um, you know, uh, I was very vocal about what was going on during the election period. And, and you know, I've always been an advocate. I grew up with next gen Star Trek Next Generation. Like the idea of fighting for other people's rights has been something that has been in my life for forever. But what I will say to that is that since I've joined SAG, I've already been to a bunch of meetings, group meetups, all these for SAG and for what we're trying to fight for. And, you know, I've even emailed Serena about becoming part of one of the committee members. So more, no, continually, yes. Awesome. On on that, how do you feel that acting and advocacy really relate? They're one and the same. You know, uh, the point of storytelling is to give a moral, is to give a message. We all started this process, not, well, this process started hundreds and thousands of years ago with cave paintings saying, if you go outside, you're going to run into this big furry animal that's going to eat you. You know, that's how it started. My One of my favorite jokes of all time is from uh, History of the World Part One. And it was the dawn of man, that first whole bit, right? And you, even back in the day, you had to learn how to laugh. And so stand-up comedy became a thing. And then the dinosaur comes down and eats the stand-up comic who's failing. And then everyone laughs because he's dead. But that's true. It's true. Storytelling in general is about changing people's minds, giving morals and messages that you believe in. That doesn't always technically have to be correct. You know, there are definitely movies that create morals that are wrong. Mm -hmm. But 99 times out of 100, uh, a film is giving a message that is of importance and value. I would agree with that. Did you, when you were on the picket lines, did you have any moments of doubt during the strike or fear that the AMPTP would never come to the table with a deal, with a fair deal? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Especially when they walked away. Well, how did you manage to keep the faith when things like that happened? We didn't. Oh, okay. Can you speak more to that? Yeah. That week they walked away. The amount of people that showed up compared to the amount of people that would or would, used to or would show up, dramatically dropped. Mm -hmm. Um. A lot of people, you know, it's funny. Everyone thinks that this was so much fun, right? We were all out there hanging with Jason Momoa, Lance Bass, Francis Fisher, you know, Car uh, Car Carrie Everdeen, Jerry Ryan, like all these people. And we've become friends with all these incredible celebrities and producers and directors and writers. And on one hand, yes, right? It was incredible. It was an experience that we will be able to cherish for the rest of our lives. But in reality, it was a non-combative war. We were walking in circles in 110 degree weather, smelling gas because the lines were broken or, 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 or being yelled at by IATSE members who were mad at us because they lost their house. Not that IATSE was ever against us, they weren't, but some people were mad. You know, uh, 
bottles being thrown at us off out of cars and motorcycles running through the lines and Paul Mitchell trying to run me over with his car like the Paul Mitchell yeah <laughs> this was not easy this was not we're all messed up from this this was this was really really wrong and the only thing that kept all of us afloat other than the friends we made along the way was the the knowledge of and of the fact that we were on the right side of history you know to hear billionaires say that they're going to starve us out that didn't that didn't dissuade us that angered us that made us more determined mm. so when it came to how did we pick up uh pick up uh, our bootstraps and keep walking it wasn't it wasn't a, a sheer determination thing it wasn't a i'm right or you're wrong thing it was if i give up now i will never be able to get to do what i want to do again the thing that i love will be gone and look i'm i'm an advocate for ai like i again how many times have i said this already in five minutes i grew up with star trek the idea of walking into a room and going computer i want to be in paris france with sherlock holmes and I want to uh, solve a mystery against Moriarty as Watson. Done. And the only way that's going to be possible is to have our likenesses in a data bank that the computer can pull from, that can connect it to the character of Sherlock Holmes. And then my physical attributes are put to Sherlock Holmes mental attributes that are within the character descriptions of the books you know what I mean mm -hmm. like and that's something that's we can't stop that Kevin West said that you can't yeah the, 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 the horses were not able to stop the car you know the the messenger bird was not able to stop snail mail the usps was not able to stop email you know but even still the studios were trying to make it to where acting as a viable labor profession they were trying to make that disappear and it was that knowledge of my industry, our industry, is going to crumble if we don't get what we need. So to, to really answer the question of how do we keep going in such difficult times was knowing that if we gave up, it was over. Yeah. Well, the strike this particular strike has been a historic movement. I mean, it's the longest strike in the union's history. Mm -hmm. um, and you yourself have been featured in all kinds of articles and become sort of a recognizable face on the front lines. Kind of crazy. Yeah, it's nuts, right? Um, <laughs> how has that changed or how has the strike shifted your view of the industry itself and of acting? both during the strike and now post-strike you know it's funny a friend of mine on facebook was like so who even wants to work with the amptp anymore <laughs> and it was like you know we, you have a point i do not because of the billionaires in charge but because of the things that are being run through them look we didn't fight, I mean, forget the fact if it gets ratified or not. We didn't fight this long and this hard to give up. Right. Um, 
you know, it is, it's, it's weird because I, I really have become part of the subconscious of the city now. And, and even if I die tomorrow, knock on what I don't. And, and even if I never work in a major feature film again, knock on wood that I do end up working on another major feature film again, I will forever be in history. You know, when someone is going and doing research on the strikes 50, 60 years down the line, all these articles and, 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 and my friends and I became the face of the win. Literally, like, and I'm not even putting my nose in the air, like every single news outlet used our footage of the party that we were celebrating at to win. So when it comes to how I view this industry now, it strengthens my concept of how wide reaching this is. I've partied all over the world with a single clip and that's incredible 30 seconds and i'll forever be in history yeah it's important what we do is important what we do inspires billions so what what did you do once the strike was over it's not really over right we're still fighting now we're trying to get it ratified. I've been to four separate informational meetings and in person mm -hmm. online. You have to understand too, I was out on the line 118 days. I mean, technically, you know, you're not, we're, we count weekends and holidays, even though we weren't out. But I was out on the line for 118 days. I was, not in the room where it happened, but I sure as hell had my ear against the door. You know, I've become friends with Francis Fisher, with Michelle Hurd, with Duncan Crabtree, Ireland. Uh, not just they recognize me on the street. I have some of their phone numbers. And so, you know, I may, I was able at this last meeting to, to, wait until everything was over and and walk up to Duncan and ask him personal questions that I didn't even try to ask questions during the meeting because I knew I could just hang out with him afterwards. And I say all that not not again not to boast or brag or put my nose in the air, but that I was there every step of the way to hear how this was being formed. And now that the strike is over and seeing how hard these people worked for us in a volunteer position, it was inspiring. So, you know, yes. Do I want my acting career to, to blow up and I get an agent and manager and be in Star Trek and be in Avatar and be in blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. 100%. Of course, everyone does. That's in the industry. But what's next for me is to start working with SAG, volunteer with SAG. I've already, like I said, I think I said this to you earlier. I already emailed Serena, who is in charge of creating all the committees, you know, uh, pre uh, uh, the next strike preparedness. Instagram, leave me alone. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there's all these other, all these different committees and, 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 and things like that, that I am joining or at least trying to join, you know, I just joined the union. So I don't know if they're going to accept me or put me in or not because they don't know me from Adam, but yeah, this is what's next for me tomorrow. I have a, I have a, a read through for Frankenstein, uh, an adaptation that I've been working on for two years and half of the people in that are friends of mine from the line. You know, Francis Fisher might, jo might join. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty amazing. It'd be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
it's amazing those connections that you have made that have now stood the test of time and and are there for you in future projects and are there for you as you move into this next stage um post working on the line um were there my any strike, my strike captain friends and i say well, we love each other not yeah. to interrupt you, i'm so sorry we've Wait, only right. known each other for a third of a year mm -hmm. we're already at the point where we're, we're hugging kissing you know we're, we've hung out almost every day since the strike ended yeah what uh what are your favorite memories i mean in terms of any funny moments or really endearing moments of your time on the strike i mean i could go on for hours about that i told i told weird al yankovic crying like i'm literally crying in front of weird al yankovic that he, because of him i was given the permission to be weird mm. you know when Weird Al Yankovic walked up on the line, I literally said, holy S word. I don't know how if we can curse or not, you know. Uh, so a uh, holy S word, you know. Uh, I met Josh Friedman and became friends with Josh Friedman, the man who wrote War of the Worlds, Avatar 2 through 5, is working on Fantastic Four right now. I got to ask multiple people what Steven Spielberg is like to work with, what what James Cameron is like to work with. I I met David Livingston, who directed 75 episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation. I got to tell him that my morals came from Picard. My wonder came from Data. My adventure came from Riker. And it was because of him and his direction that led me there. You know, this time of my life will be unprecedented and will be unmatched the very last day of the strike we didn't know if the strike was going to be over or not but the very last day of the strike i was hanging out with jack black for like the fifth time third or fourth time at least because he was out on the lines all the time and we were just bonding over pink floyd what's your favorite pink floyd song mine is this one my the, my think great gig in the sky is the best piece of art of all time Oh, I love Great Gig in the Sky, but you know what? I really think that Wish You Were Here is their best. Right? Like, right. Look at your face. Right. That uh, This is Jack Black. This is someone that I grew up with that is a legend to me. Yeah. Hey, Jack, that, that shirt you're wearing, it looks like you're wearing your own face. Oh, yeah, it's Gandalf. Yeah, I should, I should, with my beard, I should be Gandalf. Man, you'd be a great Gandalf. Ah, oh, that's a big shoes to fill. <laughs> You know, I got to meet Jerry Ryan, who is now captain of the Enterprise, and like talk to her. I had celebrities come up to me and thank me for my work. Like big celebrities, too, that I'm like, you know who I am? I've had people come up to me afterwards because, uh, as you said, I became a pretty big staple of the strike and, and you know i still wear my cowboy hat <laughs> uh, people like it on me and i don't mind it's a very nice hat it's comfy and uh and it looks good but people recognize me because of the silhouette and i've had you know patrick gallagher who you know has been working in this industry for god 40 plus years he's leads supporting leads guest stars mm -hmm. like he's been in everything and and you mm -hmm. know he came up to me and he's been asking me my advice what do you think should i vote for for should i vote for the contract do you think that you know what about health care like do you think that we'll be able to lower the health care minimums for this year so i can get my health care I've been in the union for a week. <laughs> this guy's been in the union for forever. But because we became friends on the line, and then we were working backstage together on a play, and he knew that I was a captain, and I was getting information that others weren't, and blah, 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 blah. It's, you know, I, I, it's, it's insane. Yeah.
you know, so this and, and, and the the wide reaching effects of what happened during the strike on my life are still unknown. Yeah. I don't I don't know who's gonna be in an audition room that I walk into. Hold on, I'm so sorry. Ghost Kitty, hey, stop. I don't want you to fall. Sorry. That's okay. For I everybody can edit that listening out. out there. <laughs> Um, just fix it in post, right? Yeah, 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 or just keep it in. It's fine. It don't. It doesn't really matter, guys. I have a cat, and I live on a balcony, and he was about to fall off the balcony because he's being silly. You know, I, the the effects of what this strike did for my life. That I. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Again, fifty years down the line, some kid is going to be doing some research on this period of history and they're gonna see the msnbc yeah and there i am i and us we were able to experience this city and its people in a way that no one else will ever be able to have because again like i said in the beginning this is such a competitive town yeah and the strike got rid of that it and made that, it more community oriented yeah that alone is inspiring that alone is 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 unfathomable unfathomable you know i still uh, i'm in awe i was just talking to one of my lot captains last night i said this earlier too already i repeat myself a lot uh i'm so happy to know you i'm so glad that we're you know i love you and you know i can't wait to give everybody at this read through hugs and kisses and you know I, this is someone i just i met three three four months ago yeah i can barely get a date as a normal person <laughs> but these people that i hang out with all the time have become family yeah that community and that's that family and that that bond um as you said sometimes it feels like we're going at it alone but in reality everyone's fighting for their dreams everyone's kind of in the same boat so that community that that willingness to support each other i think is imperative for even just a, a healthy way of living and experiencing this journey in a mindset of how do we make each other better how do we support each other how do we grow so that is very inspiring that the the strike built in this sense of community and i think that it is going to affect the way that this city runs for the rest of you know the rest of time this city has changed yeah you know and yeah uh, all these people now we're we fought billionaires and won Forgetting the fact if it gets ratified or not, blah, 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 blah. If we have to go back on strike, we have to go back on strike, and that's going to suck, and it's not a good idea, but that's totally near, neither here nor there. The community that this strike created, just 180, uh, I'm sorry, 850 strike captains alone. Yeah. There's only 160,000 of us. So now what? 1%? A half a percent of us were all strike captains, all with the same mission, the same goal to fight greed and corruption. Yeah. And then we won. The there's there's a, a Thanksgiving Friendsgiving that SAG is throwing specifically for the captains. I'm having a Friendsgiving on Friday with specifically Paramount captains. My life, our lives have changed. It's amazing. And it's, it's amazing to hear. And 
um, honestly, I think that's a really good place to end it just on that sense of community and that bond and how things have grown in a more positive way throughout this change. So thank you, Miles, for joining and thank you for sharing your story. It's been a true pleasure to have you on this podcast. I'm honored to be here. All right. Thank you. And uh, for all of you listeners out there, uh, I will catch you next time and have a great day and keep advocacy, keep community in your hearts.